Hello, I'm Monica Reinagel, and you're listening to the Nutrition Diva Podcast. Welcome. This week's podcast topic was suggested by B, who wrote, Can you comment on research showing that creatine supplements can improve cognitive function in vegetarians? Do I need to worry about my vegan diet hurting my brain? Now, if you've heard anything about creatine, you've probably heard about it in the context of enhancing athletic performance. My colleague Brock Armstrong recently devoted an episode of the Get Fit Guy podcast to the potential uses of creatine to build muscle. But creatine has also been investigated as a potential nootropic. A nootropic is a substance that enhances brain function or cognition. Creatine is a non-essential amino acid, and that means that our bodies have the ability to manufacture it from other amino acids. But we can also get creatine from our diets, and the primary sources are meat, poultry, and fish. So not surprisingly, vegetarians and vegans have lower levels of creatine in their blood and their muscle tissue than meat eaters. So if creatine is important for brain functioning and vegetarians have lower creatine levels, could a vegetarian or vegan diet have a negative impact on cognitive function? I don't think so. Observational data suggests that lifelong vegetarians and vegans actually have a lower risk of dementia than meat eaters. Now, this may not have to do directly with the amount of animal products they do or don't consume. It could be due to a higher intake of vegetables or legumes, for example. Or it could have to do with the fact that vegetarians are statistically more likely to exercise and less likely to smoke or any number of other lifestyle factors. That's the difficulty with observational data. It's impossible to prove cause and effect. Nonetheless, there's little evidence to suggest that a vegetarian or a vegan diet impairs brain function or that it increases the risk of cognitive decline. But since vegetarians do have lower creatine levels, would there be any benefit for them to taking creatine supplements? One study compared the effects of creatine supplementation on healthy young women who were either vegetarians or meat eaters. Now, this was a a very short study. It lasted just five days, and the subjects took 20 grams of creatine per day, or they took a placebo. Now, the good news is that the omnivores and the vegetarians performed about the same on the initial tests, which, again, suggests that a vegetarian diet was not negatively affecting their brain function. The bad news, perhaps, is that the supplement didn't seem to do a whole lot for either group. Another smaller but longer study that involved only vegetarians found that 5 grams of creatine per day for 6 weeks led to some improvements in performance on standardized tests of cognitive function. And again, these were healthy young subjects. They were testing things like reaction time, short-term recall, and vigilance. Now, it's not really clear that the improvements that were measured by the scientists would be significant enough to translate into any meaningful impact on daily life, such as making them safer drivers or helping them remember their gym locker combination. At this point, it's still unclear whether taking a creatine supplement would produce any meaningful benefits for vegetarians. But these were healthy young subjects. What about older individuals who are more likely to suffer from cognitive decline? Well, one small study of about 30 elderly individuals found that taking 20 grams of creatine per day led to statistically significant improvements in performance on cognitive tasks after just five days. But again, did this translate into noticeable effects in the subject's daily life? Did they find it easier to finish the crossword puzzle or remember where they left their glasses? We don't know. But even if it did, A single pilot study like this isn't enough to provide a definitive answer regarding the benefits of creatine supplementation for older people. So here's my take on creatine as a brain booster. I think we need to know more before we start recommending this as a cognitive enhancer for vegetarians or for anyone else. You'd be amazed at how many pilot studies produce promising results that are then not borne out by further research. So the first step is to see whether larger studies can confirm any of these preliminary findings. And the next step would be to establish the optimal regimen. Is 5 grams per day just as effective as 20? 
Can the benefits be measured after just five days or does it take several weeks to see results? And I'd also like to learn more about the effects of long-term use. Might the benefits increase with longer use? Or conversely, might the supplement actually become less effective over time, as is often the case? Now, you might be wondering about safety. And although the research on creatine as a cognitive enhancer is still in the early stages, there's been a lot more research on creatine to build muscle and to enhance athletic performance. So it has been evaluated at various doses, durations, and in a variety of populations. The good news is that creatine is pretty safe, but you do want to keep in mind that the supplement can have some unpleasant side effects, such as stomach cramping or diarrhea, as well as weight gain due to water retention. Although I don't think there's enough evidence to justify creatine supplements for vegetarians, there are a few important nutrients that are either quite limited or missing entirely from a vegan diet, so one that contains no animal products whatsoever, not even eggs or dairy. Strict vegans do need to be sure to have a source of vitamin B12, whether that's in the form of a supplement or from fortified foods. And although it's not strictly essential, vegans may also want to consider an algae-based DHA supplement. That's one of the important omega-3 fatty acids. And they should also take care that they're getting enough calcium, iron, vitamin D, and zinc from their diets. If you have a question you'd like to have answered in an upcoming episode of the podcast, call the Nutrition Diva listener line at 443-961-6206 and leave me a message. And then be sure to subscribe to the podcast on your favorite platform so that you're sure to hear your answer. You can also subscribe to our free newsletter for regular updates by email. And I'd love to connect with you on Facebook or Twitter. I'm at Nutrition Diva. You can subscribe to that newsletter and also find a transcript for this and every other Nutrition Diva podcast on our website at quickanddirtytips.com. And as always, I've included links to the research that I reviewed in today's show notes. The Nutrition Diva podcast is researched and written by me, Monica Reinagel, edited by Karen Hertzberg, produced by Nathan Sems and the Quick and Dirty Tips team at Macmillan Publishing, which also includes Michelle Margulis, Emily Miller, Morgan Ratner, and our fearless leader, Kathy Doyle. Thanks for listening and remember to eat something good for me.